Avataro Sentai Dawn Brothers has been a wild journey within the Super Sentai franchise, which has actually been an element of the show since the trademark was first revealed on November 1st, 2022, a Tuesday night rather than the usual Monday morning. The obvious Avatar term implied some sort of video game motif, while the Japanese terms Taro and Donbura implied that there would be some inspiration from the legend of Momotaro. For some reason, this wasn't the only trademark we got. Later on, there were leaks for the Don Blaster, Zanglas Sword, Avataro, Robotaro, and Don Oni Taijin names, the meanings of which were pretty obvious, but nothing was confirmed yet. Speculation about the folktale aspect spiked with the first rumors, which stated that the Red Ranger would be based on Momotaro himself, while the Yellow Woman would be the enemies and Oni, while the monkey, pheasant, and dog that worked alongside Momotaro would be the other rangers using CG animations tying into the video game aspect. If that sounds scarily accurate for one of the first rumors of the show, don't worry, there's this other leak. This said that the future red would have samurai and Momotaro motifs, resulting in a peach leaf visor and top knot. He would be armored like Zenkaiser, because it turns out he would use the new Shuriken Sentai gears in a gear slinger like weapon that could become a bike and combine with Jurar. The reason for this is because in the last few episodes of Kikai Sentai Zenkaiser, he would be joining the main cast before the cast of Dawn Brothers would feature Zenkaiser and Juron returning. To add to this, the first silhouette reveal of the Red Ranger arrived in magazine scans a bit later, along with another huge set of leaks. We learned the name of the Rangers, their colors, and who would and who wouldn't be a CG animation. The altars were name dropped, which would be CG robot battles in an alternate dimension meant to replace normal mecha battles until the summer where the main robot would appear, and these incorporated Legend Sentai, much like the new Avataro gears. These weren't the only Zenkaiger elements though, as Don Momotaro would use a gear slinger to transform until he switched to the Dawn Blaster in his own season, which was actually different from his bike called the Enya Rhydon. This would combine with Juron, while Zenkaiser would be a character in Dawn Brothers until June as Zenkaiser Black, alongside some other kind of black Juron form, but now we know this wasn't true. In late December, the poster for Avataro Sentai Dawn Brothers was leaked, providing our first look at the the entire team, not to be outdone by themselves, Toei made their own official announcement later on to show off the Enya Raidon alongside confirmation that it would appear alongside Don Momotaro in episode 42 of Zenkaiger. New magazine scans showed off the new team's equipment and teased Don Momotaro's upcoming appearance in Zenkaiger alongside our first looks at the Don Zenkaio robots. These images added to speculation at the time that Don Momotaro's identity would be Stacy from Zenkaiger, marking the final act of his redemption by using the Tojiru gears in a new way as Avataro gears, and teaming up with his siblings from across the multiverse. These were paired with rumors that the new enemies of Dawn Brothers would be a dynasty of Oni, including an entity that was in control of Gigi in Zenkaiger, and this faction overall would be related to Oni sister, hence why she's an Oni. When the preview for episode 42 dropped, these rumors were squashed, but but many still thought that Don Momotaro would be a new recurring cast member once he acquired the Sentai gear in the episode, but alas, it was just a summon and we would have to wait until the actual show to see who Don Momotaro really was. However, he still got to make history. He has not only the earliest cameo by a Sentai ever, but also his own fight scene and his own mecha debut within an episode of the previous show. The press conference ultimately revealed his identity to us alongside his companions and his enemies, Master Kaito and Zenkaiser Black made their debut in the trailer as well. Some of the other Legend Sentai elements, such as the Hitosuki and Avatar changes, were saved for magazine scans that surfaced shortly after the press conference. Once Kikai Sentai Zenkaiger aired its finale, instead of handing things off, the leaders seemed to join forces as it was time for the festival to begin. I was initially a bit weary of Dawn Brothers. While I enjoyed how different the premiere of the season was, I was kind of worried if something this wild and different would be able to work, but sitting here 49 episodes later, I have to admit that the simple fact the show was so unique is the reason I had so much fun watching it. There are a lot of things in Super Sentai that you just kind of accept as parts of the show, and early on Dawn Brothers makes you realize you take that for granted. Normal robo fights become scarce and are replaced by the alter 
soldier battles and the team operating out of the same base even transforming together even knowing each other is non-existent and it's so cool an interaction as simple as saru brother and oni sister realizing each other's identities is so powerful and provides this incredible feeling of development in the main story super early on so then in the last few episodes when we get scenes like this with all the characters just sitting around and yelling at each other it reminds me that we had to build up to these characters actually knowing each other's identity and i love that screw it while we're talking about the characters and what makes the show so unique i cannot stress how amazing i think it is that dawn brothers will have episodes with some characters barely in them again i guess one of the things i've taken for granted in sentai seasons is that main cast members will appear almost every single episode after they debut but there are some episodes of dawn brothers where tsubasa doesn't show up in civilian form at all sometimes jiro only shows up at the very last moment to deliver a finisher there are some episodes that don't involve our main villains at all so we can focus more on the heroes sometimes taro the red ranger the poster character will only have a single scene outside of his ranger suit because the episode is focusing on someone else i still cannot wrap my head around that being a somewhat regular occurrence but it's only an occurrence early on because as the characters start to learn each other's identity and start to actually spend more time with each other interacting outside of civilian form and i think this is the shining element for why Don brothers uniqueness won me over in the end the show will literally restructure itself to focus on a single character or storyline not once does it feel awkward because it's done for the purpose of development well that's not true <laughs> There is so much care put into the stories of the rangers, but I feel a lot of times there isn't that extra step to tie it into the toys, so in a weird way, a lot of the typical sentai tropes feel wasted here. There's a lot of episodes with a pretty engaging plot that's solely focused on the main characters, and then in the last five minutes of the episode, a random person will spontaneously combust with anger, forming a hitosuke, now the rangers have to fight it, we get stock footage, we get more stock footage to switch to the robots, and we get like a two second and mecha fight and then the monsters defeated it now we're back to the characters and we actually get a satisfying wrap up the robo taro gears super got ties we don't really get an explanation for that weird slot machine thing on their phones i don't know it feels really jarring like mandated parts of the episode i mean i don't need an explanation for this slot machine thing but it's just so random that it's like it's little crux of why the rangers have their powers but then at the same time the characters do have like satisfying moments to go along alongside the debut of the toys there's just not that extra step like oh the rangers did something so now they got a new power and even with the monsters since they're sort of just a natural part of the world and just happen whenever the randomness is kind of a clever way to provide unique storylines and typical action but it is kind of embarrassing the sentai gears never amount to anything you have this plot line going throughout the entire show nothing ever happens with it other than that yeah the fact dawn brothers was so unique with its storytelling really makes it sad Fine, especially when it comes to the multiple plot lines that it has occurring like at every point in time. Natsumiho and the Juto, the Noto, Murasame, all of that will have focus episodes, but they're spread out across the season, so usually it always feels like stuff is happening one way or another. Personally, I didn't mind that we'll have an episode about the Juto, and then they're not mentioned for a little bit until an episode actually focuses on them. It feels like the show's always kind of building up or anticipating some big next plot development even when the episode isn't explicitly about that like we get the penguin juto established very early on from Jin, and only in the last few episodes we actually get the penguin juto appearing but it adds this sense of doom so when it actually appears and now we're dealing with the whole juto extravaganza it's like wow okay yeah this really was something we should have been building up for the whole season it's a nice balance between having a super plot focused show with game changing stuff every episode and the usual episodic nature of a sentai the show spends so much time setting up tons and tons of little moments of plot lines so that the end game gets to be filled with resolution after resolution a staple of sentai seeing all the main rangers transform on screen together is turned into a super fulfilling moment in the final stretch of the show after starting off so confused and with so many questions it's cool to get to the end and see how the pieces fit together and how this incredible roller coaster of a season creates one of the most interesting finales ever but first, I want to talk about Zenkaiger again. Let's go back to 2021. Actually, I made my Zenkaiger review. Never mind. 
Uh, having parts of Dawn Brothers be borrowed from Kikai Sentai Zenkaiger fits right into the insanity of this season. Maybe that's just because Zenkaiger is my favorite Sentai and I loved the references to it. Hi Majin, but I don't know, it makes Dawn Brothers stand out even more than it already does. The story manages to work completely independently on its own without any connections to its predecessor, but having these sequel elements really enhanced things in my opinion. There's nothing you need to know about Zenkaiger to understand that the owner of Cafe Donbura is the mysterious admin of the Don Brothers collecting the Avataro gears and he has his own unique ranger changer in form. But if you know about Zenkaiger, the cafe is the candy shop. The owner is a mature version of Kaito. His ranger form is a recolor of Zenkaiser. The gears are transformed versions of the previous year's gears and he still uses last year's changer. It just makes Kaito a bazillion times more interesting, not just because he's a mysterious character within the lore of the show, but because the the context of a different show makes him even more mysterious. I mean, arguably without the sequel aspect, this part of the show would flop anyways, because part of the charm of the character is that we already have the backstory. It's this other 49 episode show that you should watch because Majin is awesome. And then sometimes the sequel aspect makes the show more satisfying. Don Oni Taijin's debut would be epic no matter what, because it appears a dozen episodes into the season, unlike most Sentai Robos, Don Bros is a unique blah blah blah. The thing is, before that, there was Don Zenkaio, which as mentioned earlier, is a combination that debuted in the previous season, and it just functions as the main mecha for a few episodes. There's no question about it. The last mecha that was in Zenkaiger is the first mecha that's in Don Brothers. When we get Don Oni Taijin, there's this shift in, like, the visual language of Don Brothers. The show evolved from using another show's aesthetics, where only the leader gets to pilot the robot, into using its own concepts where everyone gets to fight together. And if it wasn't a sequel, I don't think the shift in the robots that are used in mecha fights would be nearly as satisfying. There's a ton of other little things that I think contrast Zenkaiger really well. Zenkaiger had the characters do some random new roll call every episode, while Don Brothers has its villains end up doing more roll calls than the heroes. Zenkaiger was all about the five together, while uniting the five Don Brothers takes almost the entire show. The Zenkaigers already have all their gears while the Don Brothers are trying to collect all of theirs, but there's also tons of little homages, like how both seasons deal with parallel worlds and the resonance within them coming to Earth, or the humor once again. Zenkaiger makes tons of meta jokes to poke fun at the Super Sentai franchise overall, while Don Brothers has a non-canon recap episode because Kaito watched the finale of Kamen Rider Revised, looks at the camera, and is like, alright, Don Brothers is having its finale too, fuck y'all. But my favorite is that in Zenkaiger, most of the team were robots that formed the mechas, and the humans would gain their own robot forms to form their own mechas, and in Dawn Brothers, the whole team gets robotic upgrades in order to form their mechas, it's like a whole team of Super Zenkaiger. Kaisers. And just like Zenkaiger, every combination is filmed with tons of little playful bickering. It's so much fun. And just like Zenkaiger, oh no, not just like Zenkaiger. And those combinations are used to form human sized mechas. We get ground level mecha fights, and they use the changer to grow large. There's a shot of a Super Sentai robot holding the season's changer so that it can grow giant. That's just so cool. It's so different, but it's so cool to just watch in action. And then I know I ragged on the mecha fights earlier, but like visually they all take place in this different kind of dimension and it gives them all this incredibly unique flair that no other season has. Once again, it's like the sequel aspects just kind of build and build until we get this super unique season of Super Sentai. Speaking of the mechas, that's kind of how I view the relationship between Zenk Hydra and Dawn Brothers. Two distinct robots that work without any connections to each other like any other Sentai season, but when you bring them together, it just creates this incredible wild ride with a somewhat connected storyline, and it's such a blast to watch both of these back to back. I can't wait for everyone to finally meet in that crossover film. Despite its unique qualities, like any other Sentai, the Donbra- sorry, all of the rangers in this show end up being the glue that holds everything together for me. This is easily one of my favorite casts out of the seasons I've seen. Of course, yes, they've all got fun personalities and this and that, but I especially enjoyed how they're all flawed characters, how they interact with each other because of this, and how over the course of the show they kind of become better, but no one's perfect, so they're all still kind of flawed by the end of things. I love that Taro is like the peak human being, a perfect badass, but he's 
he's a huge asshole and people don't like him, but over the course of the show, he actually makes friends. I like Haruka's random faces and noises and how even though she's pretty self-absorbed, she won't hesitate to save people and by the end of things has a point of trajectory thanks to Sonoza. Sadaharu is similar, he wants to help people, but he's also pretty self-absorbed to the point where money burns him, but at the end of the show, he comes to accept his former enemies. Jiro kind of disappointed me. I love the usage of his two personalities and his goal to become like a superhero and stuff, but then his resolution is this minute-long scene that's kind of anticlimactic and wasn't really its own arc dedicated to it. There's a lot of other stuff going on. I wish maybe he could have gotten a bit more focus, but hey, at least I, he's still pretty cool. Murasame has the same issue. I thought he was a really fun character existing entirely as a suit or as the Juto killer sword, but then the Juto plot is resolved without him ever appearing, so his main purpose wasn't utilized to its full extent. He doesn't really find a new purpose, so it's just like, okay, what? What do we do here? Tsubasa and Kijino were the huge standouts for me though, which is really funny because they're the two CG guys. And it's all because of their connective plotline with Natsumi and Miho and all this crazy shenanigan stuff. I super enjoyed this wild interpersonal connection between the two of them, how it's like teased early on. You're like, wait, is that the same person? And then they don't really address it for a while until it's like, bam, yes, they are the same person. Oh no. But then that also ties into the greater Juto plotline as well and it turns Tsubasa into a protagonist kind of. He's on his own journey since he doesn't meet the Dawn Brothers for most of the show and it also shows how bad of a person Kijino is. I think it's super interesting that we have a ranger like this that turns into a monster multiple times. A kind of character that you love to hate and he's the first male pink ranger and by the end of things like you know he kind of gets better but not really and I, I like that. In a way, this is kind of the embodiment of what I like about the Dawn Brothers. They aren't perfect, again, one of them becomes a monster, but at the end of the day, whether they're a CG bird or a monkey suit, man, there are still people who want to save everyone and do the right thing, kind of. But the real shining example of this to me, which is also my favorite element of Dawn Brothers, is the Noto. These are my favorite favorite villains in Super Sentai now. All three, six, eight, six of them. And the reason for this comes straight from their core concept of not really being villains. They're not out for world domination. They're just a team of pseudo rangers, as I've been calling them, as exterminators for the random monsters that are just a natural occurrence of the world, which is what the Dawn Brothers are doing as well. The only difference is that the Noto are actually saving a different world. So they outright kill the monster hosts. By using this fundamental part of human morality, hey, these guys are killing people. That makes them bad. The divide between the good guys and the bad guys is effortlessly made. The hierarchy of focus is so clean cut because the Don brothers are our title characters, saving humans, and the Noto are their antagonists, also fighting monsters but killing humans in the process. So I never thought things were cluttered or, you know, there's things in question like, should we be rooting for the Don brothers? The Noto, though, obviously, you know, you do start to root for them over the course of the season. They do kind of present the idea like, are they right? Because humans do keep turning into monsters because human desire doesn't go away. And I, I think it's interesting. It's this kind of complex commentary between the two factions fighting Hitosuki, but we still have a clear set of antagonists, and the story's about making them protagonists as well, I guess. I thought the relationship slowly forming and developing between the rival teams, eventually making them allies to each other, was fantastic. Sonoi is obviously the standout because he's so gay for Taro, my goodness, and it, I, I'm happy for them, I'm glad they found each other. But I also greatly enjoyed Sonoza's just funny, like, you know, everything he does, and his growing friendship with Haruka. I don't like Sononi's voice, but I did like that there was this interesting plotline with Tsubasa. When they ultimately come to realize that they've spent so much time with their former rivals, that they're now more human than Noto, it just feels so right, because we've been building this the whole season. The final conflict of the season isn't, alright guys, we have to band together for one last mission against the big boss, it's just, we like these Noto guys a bit. 
right now, I guess. So why why don't we join forces, everyone, and all work together now? I don't even want to say these are villain redemptions. It's unlike anything else I've seen in Super Sentai. But since it's still a season of Sentai, we need bad guys. So we get the Noto Overseers to replace them, or Sonoshi Goroku, as they're affectionately called. And if I really had to narrow down my favorite part of Dawn Brothers, it's these three goofballs. They maintain the same elements of the original Noto that I just explained that I enjoyed so much, but with this added extra flair that they're this late game addition to enhance the creation of the nine member Dawn Brothers. Their character foils to the character foils, this very distinct way to show how far the Noto have grown and developed, and I also think they're very funny. They just kidnap people, they commit petty little crimes and inconveniences when they're about to win they start goofing off and get their asses beat the same way the next episode. They secretly hate each other, but not really, I guess they're very open about it. And the most villainous thing they do is create a monster based on the next season of Sentai, but realize they can't control it and then start sucking up to the Dawn Brothers so they can all defeat it together. And on top of that, they've got really fantastic pseudo ranger designs. And all of the Noto in general, actually, I really love how they look like rangers, but they've got eyes and they're, they got this very distinct style different from like normal Sentai and the Dawn Brothers themselves. I love Sonoshi and their evil quirkiness. I love Sonoshi, not that I just, Sonoroku is crazy and I, I like Sonogo. Uh, the actress watched all of Dawn Brothers apparently and then demanded they add her into the show and she gets to be added in as a whole ranger. She's uh, really pretty and the, the character and the suit are really pretty as well. Uh, <clears throat> I could have watched a whole show with her and her friends wreaking havoc across Japan, forcing the Dawn Brothers to stop bickering and making out, and have to come together and do whatever wacky thing to stop their diabolical plan of using blow darts to attack normal men. But I think maybe what makes them more special to me is the fact they're only part of this endgame arc. I can certainly tell you though that it made the ending of Dawn Brothers stink that much more for me because while I definitely enjoyed the overall show and its characters, these were the guys I, I really ended up latching onto. I was not only very sad I had to say goodbye to these characters so soon, but also the way we had to say goodbye to them, they get brutally murdered and then their suits get reused. Nothing else in the show stung as much as that. And honestly, I kind of have to respect the show for not pulling its punches like that. However, Inue, I hate you. You could have let them live. In all, Avataro Sentai Dawn Brothers is truly unlike any other Super Sentai season, in my opinion. From its characters, to its plot, to its wonderfully fantastic villains, and I had a blast experiencing it over this past year. I'm gonna have to reflect on whether or not I think this beats Maji Ranger's family dynamic for me, but for now I think it's a pretty close third place. It definitely matches its predecessor for me, and I'm definitely very excited to see these two join forces at long last. Please let me know if you felt the same way or a different way about Dawn Brothers down in the comment section. Also make sure you're subscribed for my upcoming Sentai Potential and King Gojo premiere review, or check out my Patreon for how you can see that early, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>